comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, reading from the first verse. We'll be skipping around this chapter a bit. Reading from the King James translation, you'll find these words. Take heed that ye do not do your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Yes. Skipping down to the fifth verse. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, yes. pray to thy Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Skipping down to verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, Anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. I just read from the Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, the first through the third verses, the fifth and sixth verses, and the sixteenth through the seventeenth verses. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. We're going to ask Reverend Joseph King to come forth at this time to lead us to the throne of grace. Let me pray. Father God, the ruler and architect of this world, we come thanking you for another day journey. Realize, O oh Lord God, you say it, you have our infirmity upon you. Realize that we are already healed in Jesus. Somebody here, Father God, need a healing church this morning. Their mind, Father God, is sick. The body is feeble. Father, if you church, everything will be all right. Somebody, Father God, is going to came to church this morning with a bereaved heart. You get church and fill their heart with joy. Father, we come this morning thanking you for you watched over us all night long. Yes, you did. And then early this morning, Father God, you taught us with a finger on your divine love. We love we labor to see a new day have dawned. We want to thank you. Somebody rose early this morning, Father God, didn't have food, clothing, not shelter. But Lord, we thank you. When we rose, we had something to eat, a roof over our head. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for a portion of our health and strength. Father God, we thank you for being clothed in our right mind. Realize that, oh Lord God, it could have been the other way. Father, we ask you to church right now, Lord, 
Somebody is going through a crisis. Not only in the street, but right here in Bethel. Lord, if you would church, everything will be all right. Somebody here, Father God, need a church of love. Somebody is lonesome, Father God, and just needs somebody to come by and visit. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask you to bless not only this congregation, but every church door that assemble in your name. And then, Lord, when we come down to life in journey, if that will meet us in a dying hour, everything will be all right. We have this in the mighty name of Jesus. And the whole mother too said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. second dose. Uh, it will be at one o'clock and we will be uh, hosting that in our family life center. So if you know somebody who had not gotten a shot, who had not gotten around to getting a shot, this is an opportunity for them to come forth. Uh, so please let's spread the word so that we can get as many of our friends and neighbors vaccinated so that we can move forward. Uh, we're looking forward to some great things, but in order to bring those to pass, we have to get beyond this pandemic. So please, sir, please, ma'am, we are encouraging you to take advantage of these opportunities. On the 27th of June, spread the word. If you know somebody that needs to get a vaccine, you know, they can give us a call here. Uh, you can contact any member of Bethel. You can go to our webpage. We should have something up this week in reference to the uh, vaccine clinic. Uh, we want to do our part in making our community safe so that we can go forth and do the work that needs to be done. We ask that you keep our brothers and sisters lifted up in prayer. Uh, we ask that you keep Brother Albert Johnson uh, lifted up in prayer in the passing of his nephew, Alvin Johnson, Jr. Uh, let's keep the entire Johnson family lifted up. Also, uh, we ask that you keep uh, Sister Christine Dawson lifted up in your prayers. Uh, one of her nephews passed and was funeralized on yesterday. Uh, so, uh, please, sir, please, ma'am, let us keep our brothers and sisters in their time of bereavement in our prayers. Also, Sister Lillian Andrus, 
uh, keep her lifted up in prayer. Uh, she's had an aunt that went home to be with the Lord and other family members who are going through health challenges at this time. So please keep her in your prayers. And let's keep Sister Joyce Thomasy lifted up in our prayers as she is uh, traveling back and forth uh, dealing uh, with her parents. We know that God is able and we know that God can do anything but fail. Uh, Shaquana, it's good to have you with us, dear. Uh, she had to undergo uh, a medical procedure, and uh, she is now with us today, and we're keeping her lifted up in prayer. And all of her youngsters who are with us, it is a blessing to have you all in the house. God is able. Amen. He's a battle axe in the time of a battle. Voice of 
morning I want to uh, continue with these messages from the mountain. Well, as God has seen fit to educate his people. But before I, I, I go forth, uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, those who are graduating today. Um, uh, Keonia Smith, the granddaughter of uh, Deacon Jesse and Sister Gail Smith, and Ambria Walker, the daughter of Deacon Henry and Sister Zandra Walker, are both graduating today from Tuskegee University. And we just want them to know that we are praying for them and their future success as they go forth to take their place in the world, in the places where God will plant them. Amen. In the fifth, sixth, and seventh chapters of gospel according to Matthew. Jesus sat down and taught the people. It's been referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. And unlike so many sermons that we hear, this was not a sermon on how to get to heaven. But this was a sermon on how you live if you want to bring heaven down here on earth. And today I want to tag one verse from the passage that I read in your hearing, and we will be walking around the sixth chapter of uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. But right now I want to tag the 16th verse, and it reads, Moreover, when you fast, well, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I want to speak from a topic this morning. Is your halo too tight? Let's see, let's see. Is your halo too tight? Let's see. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we give you glory. We praise and magnify your holy name. We thank you that you brought us safely thus far through dangers seen and unseen. And we thank you that in spite of what we are, you look beyond our faults and you've lifted us up. Thank you, Lord. Now as we've come to this appointed time in which you have extended me the grace to break the bread of life, I acknowledge that I am not worthy, but all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender to you to do with as you see fit. Let your word go forth. Let your name be glorified. Let your people be edified. And through it all, we will give you all praise, glory, and honor. Now, Lord, have your way in this place. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Is your halo too tight? You know, when, when we look at folks, you know, when we suspect that certain individuals have their religion on parade, we tend to think that they're wearing their halo too tight. You see, when your halo is too tight, all kinds of complications set in. When, when your hat is too tight, you get a headache. But when your halo is too tight, you give other people a headache. You turn them off and make Christianity distasteful and Christ unattractive. You know, there, there's an old slogan in the advertising industry. It says, running a business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. 
You know what you're doing, but she doesn't. The slogan is true. It's, it pays to advertise and advertisements, empty attics and garages of dust collectors and line our pockets with dollars. They stimulate sales and increase profits. But there are some things, however, that advertising kills. Advertising kills humility. You advertise it and it becomes pride. Another is altruism. If you advertise it, it becomes egotism. And you advertise spirituality, it becomes hypocrisy. And Jesus spoke of this when he spoke of this situation in the sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, that we have to be careful about wearing your halos too tight. There are three things that he warned us about in order for us to live a productive life. And, 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 and see, he also wanted us to know that if you advertise your spirituality, you will kill it. Well, what were the three things he was talking about? First of all, he says if, if, if your halo is too tight, if you're doing good deeds in order to get people's attention, if you're doing stuff to be seen by men, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's not healthy for your spiritual development. Jesus assumed that we would do the work, and, and, and he wanted to warn us against idleness. He didn't mean for us just to sit down and sit on our hands. However, he wanted us to not take your good deeds for granted and be doing it, just to show folks how spiritual or how holy you are. See, if, if our motives are wrong, uh, then our good deeds begin to attract attention to us. And, 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 and we make the, 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 the we run the risk of, of, of stunting our spiritual growth. T.S. Eliot said in his book Murder in the Cathedral. He said, the last temptation is the greatest treason to do the right deed for the wrong reasons. We have to be mindful of that. See, on, on, on the surface, it seems that this, this is in conflict with what Jesus said, let your light so shine that people may see your works and give your Father the glory. So, you know, it, it, it looks like it conflicts, but, but the reality is the conflict is only on the surface. When Jesus warned us uh, to let our light shine, it was so that God would be glorified and not us. See, and, and, and if we lift up God, then he will draw all men unto him. If our motives are right and we're pointing to the right one. But, but, but how he dealt with this piety on parade, he said the result of the religions of ourselves, of us, is to glorify us and not glorify God. And we got to be careful. Because if we're glorifying us and not glorifying God, then your halo is too tight. When we do good deeds uh, to not call attention to ourselves, but as an expression of our love for God, we are following the precepts of Christ, and to do good deeds for any other reason is to destroy the blessing. Yes. And along with the blessing, the joy that comes from doing good work. It only happens if your halo is too tight. The second thing Jesus wanted to warn about, he warned about uh, if your halo is too tight, folks will be looking at your deeds sideways. The second thing that he wanted to warn us about is if your halo is too tight, 
Is your halo is too tight when you pray to impress people and not God. Yeah. Doing works, and then he came along and said, if you pray like the hypocrites pray, you already got your reward. Mm -hmm. See, see, he his plea was that we should not pray like the hypocrites. Our prayers have to be sincere, and it's a matter between us and God. You ain't praying to man. You ain't praying for the benefit of man. You're praying to talk with God. That's between you and God. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said you need to go in your closet. Uh -huh. Well, we're preaching as well and fine, but what about publicly? You know, you know, uh, 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 we always talk about the deacons who pray publicly. See, you know, can, can we talk? Uh -huh. The thing about praying in public, well, you need to be mindful about what you're saying in public. Because the, 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 the measure by how effective your prayer is, is how it's reflected in your living. Well, all right. So if you're praying, and what you're living and what you're praying is not walking together, if they're not congruent, if, if they're not in agreement, something wrong. I remember there was a, a, a deacon in my home church, and every time his brother prayed, my mama never closed her eyes. And I asked her, I was a little, what's the mama, how you don't never close your eyes when deacon so-and-so prays? She said, the Bible said, watch him pray. It wasn't until later I found out why mama never closed her eyes when this deacon prayed. See, this, 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 this brother had, had a, a, a public position in the community, and people saw his lifestyle. And his lifestyle didn't correspond with what he was praying. You know, when, when, when you're sitting there praying about how good God's been, and, and, and Lord, you just picked me up, and oh, you know, I'm just low down and all that, and Mama sitting there going, mm hmm. His prayer life and his and, 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 and his regular life didn't correspond. Jesus said, you, you, you have, you have to be, be, be mindful of these things. And he said, we have to make sure that we don't get caught up into the situation that the hypocrites get caught up into. Let, 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 let me run this quickly. See, see, first of all, um, in, 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 in ancient uh, Israel, in the ancient Near East, is the, the Jews had three times a day that they prayed. They prayed at 9 a.m., they prayed at noon, and they prayed at 3 o'clock. Every day. That was a part of the ritual. God wanted to make sure that, that you know, you need to, to, to pray. Now, the intent was to keep our minds dwelled on God. The result was, let me see how, how I can make this work, because, you know, I mean, and as a result, they were more worried about what folks were thinking than about concentrating on what God needed to hear from them and what they needed to hear from God. You know your prayers run, run, run a risk when you're praying, but you ain't listening for an answer. That's a one-way conversation. That's how the hypocrites pray. They, they, they want everybody else to talk about, oh, that was a moving prayer. Well, the one you want to move with your prayer is God. That's right. That's right. And, and please understand, Jesus wasn't condemning public prayer. Because see, there were many occasions he attended the synagogue and engaged in public prayer. And his disciples followed the same practice. Rather, Jesus was asking us to direct our prayer to God instead of to the crowd. If our public prayer is so directed, it will be as a private a prayer as we might offer in the quietness of our home. In other words, when I'm praying in public, uh, what I'm saying is you just happen to overhear, but I ain't talking to you. All right. I may be talking about you and on your behalf, but I'm talking to God. You just get to overhear the conversation. All right. mm -hmm. See, Jesus asked that we not think of prayer 
as the repetition of many, many words. Our Heavenly Father knows what we stand in need of before we ask. We are uh, to liken God to a large reservoir filled with water. Our prayers do not place water in the reservoir. They only open the gates and allow the water to flow. Prayer is never overcoming God's re uh, reluctance. But rather prayer is us gaining a hold of God's willingness. And then Jesus just didn't stop there and say, okay, you know, when you pray, you but let me show you how to pray. And I know I've heard folks say, well, you know, he's he talking about the Lord's prayer. That's the Lord's prayer. You need to pray your own prayer. Yeah, I, and I agree. Yes, you need to, to pray your own prayer. But there's a pattern. There's some things that need to be in there. See, uh, it, it, it's not stifling, spontaneous prayer when we use the model that Jesus gave us, when he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory of heaven and ever. Amen. The pattern is that certain things ought to be in there. First of all, you ought to be giving God some praise. That's right. When you fall on your face before you ask for anything, you ought to say, Lord, you are that. I appreciate you. You know how it is when our children come to us and they want something? You're less likely to give it up if they just come in and say, give me $10. You can't say good morning. You can't ask how I'm doing. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a bank to you. You got to do more greetings when you go to the ATM. God is the same way when he, he wants us to come in and fellowship with him. God, I, I want you to know I appreciate you. You've been good to me. It hasn't escaped my notice. I, when I think about where I could have been and what could have happened, and I looked over and I realized that you had your hand on me. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Then he said, Jesus said, when the, 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 the next thing is, the, 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 thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I want what you want. Yeah. It ain't about me, it's about what you want to do through me. Lord, I, I want to see it straightened out. Now, I know there are times I want, Lord, you need to straighten that. You know, Lord, you need to fix this situation. Not realizing that God probably allowed this situation to be jacked up because he needed to fix something. And while I'm saying, Lord, you need to do this and you need to do that, we need to stop and say, wait a minute, Lord, maybe this is the way you need to do this. Jesus prayed that. Lord, can't you take this cup? Isn't there another way we can do this? But then he came to himself, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Amen. He had to also acknowledge the fact that, Lord, why are you forgiving me? Well, Help me to forgive somebody else. Because, you know, it, 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 it takes, I don't know about you, you need the help of the Lord to forgive some folks. Yeah, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you keep living. There's some folks that messed over you, that talked about you, that dogged you. You know they don't mean you no good. They smile in your face. They trying to stab you in your back. And when you see them coming, you're going, Lord, have mercy. Here they come. See, we have to learn to forgive them. Not for their sake, but for us. We have to acknowledge that they are flawed just like I'm flawed. And Lord, you need to give me what I need so I can deal with them when all their brokenness and in all my brokenness. And I acknowledge I can't do it without you. Amen. Yeah. You know, I think of the, the situation when, when Jesus uh, uh, witnessed the, 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 the publican praying and then the, the beggar come up and... and, and 
And the publican came up and said, Lord, I thank you. I'm not like that beggar over there. You know, I got nice clothes. I live in a nice house. And, and you've blessed me abundantly. And then the beggar, all he could say was, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. His prayer had nothing to do with the publican. You know, I wish I was humble enough to be able to just ignore what somebody else said about me and just deal with me and the Lord. Because, see, my prayer might have been, get them God. And, and not only this, but, but Jesus acknowledged that every day we got to pray for forgiveness. Every breath we got to pray for, you know, look, we all, we'll give a good bucket of milk and kick it over. <laughs> We're in a constant state of a need of restoration, and that always ought to be on our mind. And then we also need to acknowledge that we need to be delivered from temptation. I remember I preached a sermon one time, and, 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 and I was preaching about sexual immorality. And, 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 and this guy came up to me and said, you know, that was a good message, but you know, that was for the young folk. Not long after that, a few years later, they found him dead in a compromising situation. <laughs> Don't have nothing to do with me, you know. You you talking about it? No, no. All of us, all have sinned and have fallen short. And the minute that you think, well, I ain't got that problem no more. Look out! I'm almost finished, y'all. I'm almost finished. But Jesus said, but when you pray in secret. My Father will reward you publicly. You ain't got to put because see some stuff you and the Lord just need to talk about. Yeah, that's right. Man, that's right. Because the truth be known, there's some things the Lord need to deal with me. Mm -hmm. I'm praying about somebody else, but I'm the one that that, that, that stands in need of prayer. Jesus said, if you pray to my Father in secret, he will reward you publicly. Be careful with your good deeds. Because if you're doing it to be seen, you already got your reward. Yes. Be careful when you pray to impress other folks. Because you got your reward. And then the final thing, and, and, and this is one that a lot of us don't do. When you fast, you know your halo is too tight when you fast and, and everybody know about it. That's right. Oh, I'm on a fast. I'm on a 40-day fast. You know? I'm on this fast. I mean, you know, don't that look good? I've been fasting. You know? <laughs> then you got your reward. All right. You wasn't fasting, you were on a weight loss program. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but just like when we advertise our prayers and we advertise our good deeds, if we advertise our fasting, it destroys whatever blessing we might get. Uh -huh. It appears that the fasting prevalent in Jesus' day had three purposes. Uh -huh. First of all, it was designed to draw attention from God to the individual who fasted. Well, Second of all, it was an obvious attempt to prove that my repentance was genuine. And number three, it was often vicarious. That is, it was not designed for my own personal benefit, but rather to move God to save a nation or save somebody else or another situation from their own problems. See, it, it, it wasn't about us, but it was about us going to God on behalf of somebody else. I, I read an illustration about a preacher who, who went to be by the bedside of one of his young members, and, and his mother was sitting there with him, and, 
And, and, and for three days, she sat there on the side of the bed, and the preacher said, have you eaten? Have you had lunch? No, no, no. Well, did you eat breakfast? No, no, no. Well, don't you want to eat? She said, look, right now, I'm, I got other things on my mind I can eat later. She wasn't eating because she wasn't going to leave her child. She was beseeching God on behalf of her child. She wasn't trying to, oh, look at me, I'm fasting. Look how holy I am. No, Lord, I am just calling on you. If you look down and tend to mercy and save my child. But then we get folks who get to fasting because they want everybody, oh, you know, I'm going to fast. <laughs> You got your reward. See, see, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting to me when, 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 when we talk about this. And, and, and see, please understand, we we just not talking about turning down your plate because there are a lot of things that we do publicly for attention. You know, some folks show up for church late, so they can be seen. I remember when we were at New Birth, it was fascinating to me how, and, and, and you know, Bishop Vaughn was married at the time, and, and there were a bunch of young ladies who would sit right outside of his study waiting to get his attention when he walked by. And then afterwards, when they start putting the folding chairs out, they would wait for the folding chairs to come out so they could be right up front. And believe me, as Dr. Sue say, the sights will be saw. Look out. It wasn't about spirituality. It wasn't about hearing the words. It was about being seen. Come on, preacher. We do so many things to be seen. And I know folks saying, well, this, 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 this ain't really a feel good message. Look, I'm telling you. This ain't about how to get to heaven. This is about how to live once you get there. Yeah. Amen. This is about bringing a little bit of heaven down here to us. Well, well, Reverend, well, what is what, what is le, 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 uh, legitimate fasting? Legitimate fasting is when I, I, I go into my closet and Lord, I, I, I am here. I, I need first of all, I, I need some clarity. I, I, I need some vision. Uh, I, I, I need some direction, you know, and, and, and this is between me and you. Everybody else don't need to know what I'm dealing with, but I need to be able to come before you. And, 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 and Lord, I ain't leaving till you bless me. Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night long. And Lord said, I got to go, and I ain't letting you go till you bless me. We, we have to recognize that God created us unto good works. He, he, he calls us the body of Christ. We are the hands, we're the eyes, we're the ears, we're the feet. We're the ones that are supposed to go out and let the world know that God saw that we needed a Savior and He sent His only begotten Son down through 42 generations. That He lived, died, was hung on a cross, laid in a borrowed tomb, got up on the third day with all power in his hands. We need to let folk know this ain't my home. I'm just a steward. I'm just using it for a little while. Somebody going to come behind me. And I hope that the one that comes behind me will find that I was faithful to what God did for me. Because God is able. Yes. But you know the interesting thing about halos. I haven't been able to find in the Bible anything about a halo. <laughs> Angels don't wear them. And we see them in their white suits. We, we, we know there's a, 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 an, an anointing on them, but we don't see nothing about a halo. Where did the halo come from? 
Halo came from some artist interpretation of the holiness of God. Therefore, in order to be designated as a holy one, there had to be some physical sign. So they will put this halo on. And we have appropriated that into our theology. Not realizing that if you're advertising it, you're killing that very thing that you're supposed to be lifting up. Yes. You know, when you look at TV, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've ever seen a commercial for Rolls Royce. Now, I'm not saying they don't advertise. Maybe they don't advertise in the circles I travel in. <laughs> but I don't ever see them on TV. They don't have to. What they are speaks for itself. As Christians, who we are ought to speak for itself. I shouldn't have to take an ad out. All I got to do is let folks know God has been good to me. I know where he brought me. I know how he opened doors that no man could shut and shut doors that no man could open. When I was up against it and about to turn my, my last dime, God stepped in and, and gave me all that I needed. All I got to say is thank you. Not because I was so smart, not because I was, I was all that, not because of my education or where I went to school or where I'm from, but it's by God's grace. So if I want to advertise anything, I got to advertise His grace is sufficient. Is your halo too tight? Then I want to challenge you. Why don't you just take it off? Live the life that God has set before us. And give Him the glory. For He is worthy. God has been good to us. He has blessed us. He's brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you. And we want to just let you know right now that there's room. That all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you shall be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There is room at the cross. And all you have to do is come just as you are. Lord, please accept me as your child. He's waiting. Amen.
Brian before we began our worship service, my young brother came in and said, it's seven years old, too young for me to give my life to Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. There you go. And I told him, if you are willing, and God is ready for you, and when we extend the invitation, you come forth. And our brother came forth, and I asked him, and he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I don't know when we're going to the water. I, I need to consult with my medical folks for, to get the all clear, but we will go to the water. We will be baptized. But I want you to pray with me right now as we pray for our young brother. Father, thank you. Thank you, Thank you for our young brother who has yes. decided to make Jesus his choice. Lord, we ask that you bury him up right now. We ask that you protect his mother, his grandmother, his entire family. Let them know that they are loved with an everlasting love. And underneath are your everlasting arms. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Because we know that he has made the most important decision in his life. Now, Lord, protect him. Cover him. Put a hedge around him, Lord, that he may grow up to be the man of God that you have created him to be. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. We're celebrating Lord's Supper next Sunday. And if you had your vaccine, come on out. If you haven't had your vaccine, just make sure you got your mask. But we'd love to see you as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Let us continue to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Let us continue to pray for those in authority over us. And let us pray for healing for our nation. This weekend, we are uh, marking the 100th anniversary of the destruction of the Greenwood community in Tulsa, Oklahoma, an atrocity that many of us didn't know until a few years ago, in which an angry mob came through and burned and destroyed an entire community. And the healing couldn't go forth because rather than face it, they covered it up. They even buried some of the victims in unmarked graves. There can be no reconciliation without repentance. There can be no repentance without confession. And we need it all before we can receive healing. Let us pray for the healing of our nation. Hearts and minds together as one, let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for the young one who came forth to give his life to Christ. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us in the most difficult time in our history. Recognizing, Lord, that you said you would not leave us or forsake us. And you said you would be with us always, even to the end of the age. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and grant you his peace. And let all God's children sing together. Let the church sing amen. Let the church sing amen. God has spoken. Let the 
church.